You're watching Swipe. Here's a little taste of what's coming up in the next 10 minutes. Thomas finds out how technology is keeping the Navy ahead of the enemy. Meanwhile, I'm making music by tapping various parts of my body. And the wait for Mass Effect Andromeda is over, but does the game deliver? Hello, we've come to Red Bull Studios in London this week to get a look at a musical instrument you can wear. You know we like to bring you the unexpected here on Swipe. But before we get to that, we're going to catch up with Thomas. He's been in Portsmouth this week as the Royal Navy begins its first big exercise of the year with some cutting edge technology. The Royal Navy is about to go ultra high tech. In its largest ever cyber war games, the force will combine artificial intelligence and unmanned drones to prepare it for war in the information age. Here in Portsmouth, we got hands-on with a robot used in the last exercise, which was called Unmanned Warrior. Lieutenant, this looks like a pretty impressive piece of kit. What exactly is it? Well, it certainly is an impressive piece of kit. This is uh, CFOX. It's part of our mine disposal system that we have on board. This is the most widely used variant of vehicle and is operated from both the hunt class and stand down class uh, mine sweepers. Now this is one system that's used and was used in Unmanned Warrior. What other systems have been used in that exercise? Yes, well a whole range of vehicles uh, collectively to give us that overall picture. Uh, things like uh, helicopters but also drones, uh, pilotless drones operated both from the shore and from ship and other sorts of underwater vehicles as well. This, Remus, uh, as well as surface vehicles that are now remotely controlled. And that's really where it's going to start to progress into the future. Smaller surface vehicles, which we can control from ships, which we launch from ships, thus keeping the mine hunter away from the minefield and the personnel on board away from the threat. It's this suite of robotics, which was tested in a major exercise off the coast of Scotland in October, that will keep the force one step ahead of the enemy. The real strength of a man warrior was, was that breadth of system. So we could work with the providers, with the operators, across the whole of the maritime environment, above the water, on the water and under the water, to explore how we might use these systems in future. The exercise starting this week, Information Warrior, aims to build a mind at the centre of warships, allowing for faster, more complex decisions to be made automatically. What it does is it opens up this window of experimentation so we can experiment with technology. We can get information kit into the hands of our soldiers, sailors and airmen. 2017 is set to be the busiest year for the Royal Navy since the end of the Cold War. New ships, new subs, even a new base. Technological innovations being tested now will allow that force to sail confidently into the future. Thomas Newton, Sky News. Stay with us. Still to come, I'll be finding out how that works. It's coming right after a roundup of this week's tech news. We heard laptops and devices larger than a typical smartphone are being banned from hand luggage on flights to the UK from six countries in the Middle East and North Africa. It follows a similar decision in the US where intelligence services are concerned that electronic devices could be used to hide explosives. Twitter says it removed more than 376,000 accounts promoting terrorism in the second half of last year. The majority were apparently identified by the company's automated technology. And Devon and Cornwall Police is to launch Britain's first 24-hour drone unit this summer. Police chiefs say remote-controlled devices are cheaper and more effective when it comes to things like looking for missing people. Now, what do you get when you mix a music artist and a computer programmer? Maybe something like this. Yep, he is playing his own sleeve. That's because the shirt is actually a musical instrument. Singer-songwriter Tom and computer coder Brandon created it and named it the sample shirt. We've got one for you to try out. Nice. So if I press this, oh! We wanted to create something that brought tech and music together. Is me just moving? Is that is that causing so the trigger? Your, touch, your skin's touching it when you've got. Oh, so you've okay. got to kind of point at it rather than rest on it. It's made with conductive paint and thread. It's like how phone screens work. It kind of detects a touch and then passes um, the signal to that. that and thing. then and then where does that? Uh, so go? that talks 
using Bluetooth to Tom's laptop. Which uh, has got all the samples and stuff on it yeah. preloaded. So it's like these are different notes yeah. that we can see on well, there. Well, you can, you can trigger it to do anything. You can start and stop the computer. You can go to a different section in the song. You can just play a sample. Anything you can think of, you can do. The pair met and created the sample shirt at Sony Music's Buzz Jam event last year, set up by the Young Guns Network. Think of it as a cross between a jam session and a hackathon where music artists and coders come up with new instruments. I keep playing it accidentally. Oh my god! I've got drums in my armpits there. What happened yeah. there? Oh, you've turned it off now. Oh, no, no, no. Back to that again. Parts of it. It's because you're resting your skin on it. Could you make trousers for drummers? I think so, yeah. How important is it for an up and coming artist now to yeah. be able to code or to have friends who are coders? I think having coders as mates is awesome because you can dream up whatever you have and just put it on the computer, get your mate down for the day, get it done. And then you're on stage with something nobody else has. Where do we want to take it now? We're thinking about making a tie next. Really? <laughs> Possibly, yes. What would the girls wear? Uh, girls can wear ties, right? That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Video games time now, and Ross has picked this week's batch of new titles, and here he is with his thoughts on each one. Fans of the Mass Effect series, the wait is finally over. Mass Effect Andromeda is here, and it is not going to disappoint. It's the fourth game from this award-winning franchise, and I cannot wait to play this in more depth. I played the first hour or two of this game, and all I can say is it's definitely been worth the wait. You start off waking up from a 600-year space journey. Yes, you've left Earth trying to find a new home for humanity. The planet that you arrive at hoping that is going to be your new home doesn't quite look as it did in the photo, but hey, it has been 600 years. So you set off with the Pathfinder, who is the man destined to find you your new home. There's also other elements to this game, including a bit of multiplayer, but the main focus is all going to be around the campaign, something I cannot wait to play more of, and I'm sure once you get your hands on it, you will love it too. After all, I'm only human. If you're a fan, of arcade racers, then Flat Out 4 is definitely the racer for you. Flat Out 3 wasn't so great, this game is going back to its roots and is gonna give you the opportunity to race around 20 different tracks and really just smash everything up, get loads of boost, smash up your opponents, and it's that true, if you remember the games like Burnout, it gives you that real feeling of fast paced racing, but also fun. You're gonna have that plus other options within the racing modes of adding loads of weapons into it. So again, not only are you destroying kind of like all of the areas that you're driving through, but you're also gonna be destroying all of your opponents with things like a wrecking ball, bombs or flames. And then there is the arena. Yes, the stadium arena is back and it is down to you to fling your driver out of the car in loads of different mini games. You can fling your driver in a game of beer pong. You can curl him. You can do so many different things in a long jump. It's just, it's one of those games where you will want to better your score because you know your friends will be doing better than you. So overall, Flat Out 4, if you're looking for an arcade racing game with just fun and fast, this is definitely one you should pick up. American sports in the UK are becoming far more popular with the likes of Madden and NFL and the American football. And you've also then got basketball getting bigger and bigger over here with the NBA. But one more game that is coming out now, if you're a fan of baseball and the MLB, then MLB The Show 17 is coming out on PlayStation 4. Yes, if you imagine the FIFA of baseball, this is the game that you must have and will want. There is so much to it. You'll walk into a room watching someone play this game and it looks like you're watching the TV. It is that good graphically. Many different game modes, including obviously the show, which gives you the chance of getting all the way to the World Series and taking home the title of World Champions. You've got Dynasty mode, where you can build your own team and franchise, fill your team with massive amounts of all-stars. If you like baseball, this is the one you've got to get your hands on and you will not be disappointed. That's it for this week's episode. But don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe and you can see what we get up to throughout the week. I'll be back next time. I hope you can join us then, but I'm going to leave you with Tom to play us out.